All right, as you can see, adding in another uh, indoor power wall battery, uh, get a little more capacity out here in my building. And then I'm gonna take some of these server rack batteries in another video and I'm gonna add them to my house because I definitely need more battery power plus I'm gonna be adding more solar. So I need some more uh, battery capacity for these uh, cold nights uh, during the winter. Eight, I had 85 kilowatts in my house over there and over here I had about 35 kilowatts in my building. You know, they're two totally separate systems. You know, I do testing out here, plus I run everything on this system out here, like the HVAC and whatever power I need for this building and to make videos and stuff. So right now, the battery power, I think, was about 60% on uh, this these batteries and 61. And the new one I just put in right here, I think it was in the 50s. It was 54. And I went on ahead and just turned it on. You know, this is about as close as it's going to get. I don't want to have to stay up half the night trying to get this thing exactly the same. Because over time, it's going to line itself out. Right now, it's got four amps going into this battery. So I guess it's kind of communicating and it's telling, hey, it's trying to charge, you know, compared to this one over here. I had to keep turning the screens back on to keep turning it off on me. You know, this one's doing uh, seven amps. And this one's doing a three and a half uh, discharge. So, you know, they're kind of trying to get lined out a little bit right now. And hopefully over the next day, they'll come up and be about the same percentage, especially when they get up to 100%. Basically, I'll turn the battery on, turn the breaker on, turn the BMS switch on. Of course, I already had the battery cables connected and the RS-485 uh, cable uh, going to the other battery over here. This battery is using CAN communications going up to this 12K PV, as you might be able to see right there. And we'll go ahead and look up here to see what we got battery-wise to see if it has the right amp hour. And amp hour capacity right now is still showing the 280. I'm not sure if I might have to turn this thing off and back on. So you can just restart the inverter right on the screen. And basically, I just went on the settings because this cable, I just want to make sure this is this cable is going to work. It's a Cat6 cable. It should work. You know, I don't claim to be an expert with all these uh, cables. But basically, right here on the screen, so right here on the screen, basically, I just went to settings. Uh, you know, you start out, you're on the home page here. Click on settings. And then there's a little button up there that says restart inverter. You know, so bam, restart inverter. And a little pop-up will come on. It says, you know, do you want to restart it? You might be able to see it and I put yes and it's gonna restart it and let's see if the amp hours goes up since the stuff should be communicating now with the battery or if I'm just totally wrong about that now we have battery capacity of 560 amp hours so resetting it worked so basically right there at battery capacity you see it's 560 amp hours now instead of the 280 it, it probably would be best to have this battery at 100% and charge that one up to 100%, you know, to make sure they're going to mesh up just perfect. But sometimes you just don't have time for that, you know. So it's off just a little bit. You know, I did wait for the battery to come down some. I went and drove my car around and charged uh, my EV with the system to get the battery. I stayed to charge down a little bit so I can match them up. Let's see where they're at. That was still at 54. And that was at 60. That are definitely a little bit closer than they were when I first hooked them up. Basically, the original battery is discharging faster than the other one, just because the voltages aren't exactly the same. And eventually, they'll they'll go ahead and match up. And especially when you go and charge them to 100% with solar, you know. So I don't think it's a big deal. I didn't have a serious inrush of current or anything like that when I turned it on. It went to about 10 amps. You know, it wasn't drastic. It ain't like I had it at 100 and and zero or something like that. And I think even if you did, I think the BMS in this uh, inverter would slow it way down anyway because it's going to be able to communicate and tell what's going on and it's not going to allow it you know to be charged uh, uh more than it's rated for definitely don't recommend that i'm just saying get them close as possible and then i just say hey let it ride so what do you guys think how much battery power am i going to need for my building here to be able to charge my ev i'm hoping to be able to eventually get you know have 40 or 50 uh, kilowatt hours on the building and about 120 on my house and i think that would be um, about enough to get me through pretty much any super cold night and uh just run everything that we want to run and don't have a problem 
And that's basically what I'm looking for. I want to, my system's off grid. I know it's kind of back feeding my whole house. So I turned the whole grid off to my house. So I want to be able to run as much as possible. This year, my goal, up everything on the system so I can be, you know, off grid as much as possible. So I want to run it a lot more off grid completely. I think the longest I've ever ran off grid I can't remember. It may have been a um, week and a half or something like that. You know, week and a half straight with no grid power and then, you know, get a couple cloudy days or whatever, a really cloudy day. And that's turning back over to grid and then try to go back. A lot of times I'm only making it a few days at a time, especially during the winter, because, you know, if it's cloudy at all, I mean, we're using a ton of power just to heat the house. So the other night, I even think that the battery was at a hundred percent basically in the evening. And when you're cooking and washing clothes and got the dryer running, and people are taking showers and all that stuff. It's burning the power down. And then the heat's running all night. And I think at 6 something in the morning, we actually ran out of, well, the inverters kicked out, you know, for a, a low state of charge on the batteries. If you don't want to do that, bottom line is you got to get more batteries or have a grid input going directly into your inverters so it can automatically charge uh, your system. But I just didn't want to do mine that way at the time that I did this. And now that I look at it, maybe I will go back and put my stuff in the garage and just redo everything in there. Basically my meter goes directly into my breaker, my 200 amp breaker in my service panel. So I can't really get in between that without trying to do permits and all that kind of stuff and pulling the meter. And, you know, I don't want the government to be involved in any of my solar stuff at all. So I'm not trying to do that. So what I probably will do is add another breaker panel, which I've been talking about for a while, right next to my main service panel move all the loads over there that way i have that one panel and it's just for grid power and i'll take that grid power and go directly to some inverter maybe i'll get a couple of flex bosses or something like that or get a flex boss and uses 12k as well i think you can use both of them and i don't think for sure i'm gonna have to look up for sure if it'll take it down you know the flex boss is only going to go as high as the 12 gate can go which is eight kilowatts of output then i won't be able to do that I have to get two flex bosses or something because I'm definitely going to need at least uh, uh, 16 uh, kilowatts because that's what I got output wise for my 6,000 XP's and I do overload them sometimes. So I think two days ago, my crowd overloaded it twice because they keep forgetting we're running on solar. So they had the hot water heater was on, the dryer was on and they were cooking. Plus I think both the air conditioners or HVAC systems were on. So that goes way over 16,000 watts just from that. So, you know, usually what we do at my house to try to stop overloads is we just, if we're going to be cooking anything, we don't run the dryer at the same time. That way, if everything else could be running, as long as I'm not running the dryer, I'm not going to overload or charge my car. You know, can't do that as well. I'm trying to charge my car over here all the time now, but that has kept us most of the time from overloading just when they forget and they have the dryer on and they start cooking. And then somebody's taking a shower or something and the water heater comes on and then both the HVACs come on and it takes us about whatever, 17, 18,000 watts or something like that. Bam, it's going to kick you out for a couple minutes and then automatically restart those 6,000 XP's. Hey, and everybody that does still use my links, I definitely appreciate you. And remember, I'm going to be doing just random giveaways after February. I'm going to be doing random giveaways, you know, so people don't have to even buy anything. And it doesn't be on live streams and I'm not going to put it on a certain schedule. You just have to show up to all the live streams and you may be uh, uh, one of the lucky ones that wins uh, one of my giveaways. This is going to be whoever's there, you know, free to enter. Whoever's here, you know, just draw a name from the people that, that are in the chat and they're commenting and bam, you might win some. It might not always be a huge prize like a battery or something like that, but we're always going to try to make it something solar related. So if you're interested, hey, think about hitting that subscribe button. You know, hit that bell so you get notified whenever I have a live stream. Because a lot of people come into live streams like 20 or 30 minutes late saying, hey, they didn't know about it. And you know we do one every Thursday, me, Eric, and Adam. You know, and then we're getting uh, guests the next three weeks. Definitely going to want to be there for these guests. A couple of them you've never seen before on the, on the streams. And that should be pretty exciting. And as always, thanks for watching.